this tea down hot right now. Okay, what's up everyone and welcome back to It's a She Think TV. <sighs> By me, Dominique. Let's get right into this mess because ain't got time to waste. Okay, so welcome to the Hollywood Diva Season 3, Episode 3 Review. Alright, so we start off. <laughs> With Countess, so uh, following the last episode in which I did not watch, I'm sorry, she asked Paula to basically direct her new music video, okay? Because she wants to start, you know, getting back into music because she's talented. We all remember Freestyle Unity, okay? And CPQ. If you guys don't remember that, then you're probably too young because I know my ass is young, okay? So if I remember that, then you should remember that, okay? We all remember Freestyle Unity, so we know Countess has got that voice. So, yeah, I'm happy she wants to get back into music, but to ask Paula... Anyway, let me not even, let me not even discredit Paula. But, yeah, so, you know, she's obviously asked Paula to direct a music video. And, um, you know, Paula tells her friend Carmen about that. And Carmen then tells Paula, look, she's having a comedy night at the Laugh Factory. And she would love for her and the girls to come through, you know, especially since she's dedicating her little her little segment to them, okay, and Paula's obviously here for the mess, you know, she's obviously gonna go in support of her friend, plus she's ready to hear Carmen shade the hell out of the girls, in which she did, okay, so that was really that part, moving on, so, Countess goes to work out with Malika, okay, however, this workout session actually turned into some sort of a confused ass therapy session in which nothing got resolved, okay, so instead of working out, Malika just brings up more unnecessary bullshit to which countess just doesn't give any fucks about okay countess just wants to come and work out that's it okay she don't give a damn about what happened 20 years ago she don't care okay so you know malika obviously brings up the fact that you know um apparently she apparently countess feels some type of way towards her okay and Countess does feel some type of way towards Malika. She doesn't like Malika. She's not here for Malika and her smart-ass comments, you know? You know what Malika does, okay? She says things, but she does it in such a kind of like, oh my gosh, did I say that? You know, I didn't mean it like that. You know, I'm really nice. You know, you're a fat bitch, but you're lovely. You know, Malika's one of them type of bitches, okay? And Countess has already peeped her out. Countess isn't here for her. But, um, you know... The whole conversation just goes back to Countess not being warm. Okay, not being warm to her when they so briefly met back in the day on set of the Parkers. Like, really? And then Malika's acting like she was about six years old. No, bitch. I'm pretty sure you and Countess aren't that far apart in age, okay? Countess is probably, what, 37, 38? You're probably 35, 33, 34. I'm just saying, you weren't that young, okay? It's not that deep. Am I? Countess was working. Damn, like, you're acting like you guys were best friends and she was just rude to you. She ain't know you like that, okay? That happened ages ago. Like, move the fuck on. But, yeah, that was just a whole... That, that, that whole scene was just unnecessary. Countess, I don't know what's going on with her this season. She just doesn't seem like she has time for anyone. <laughs> she sees that she can't stand none of these bitches, okay? She really can't. I'm going to need Shar Jackson to make a guest appearance again. I'm going to need that. Because we need our Countess to be happy. Okay. Back to Countess. She then meets with Paula <laughs> and Forrest to her displeasure, okay? And before she even greets Forrest, she moves the ketchup out of the way. Because remember what happened last season, right? He, he was about to... He was about to use ketchup to, to threaten someone or some shit. Okay. All right, whatever. <laughs> okay, whatever. That was funny, though. Countess is funny. But, yeah. So... They get onto the discussion of the song that she wants to do a music video to. And she has two choices, okay? The first one is My Life. I don't even know how it went, but <laughs> I wasn't even listening. Because when I think of My Life, I just think of Mary J. Blige's song, okay? If you look at my life, you see what I see. But what was Countess saying? I don't know. She, I feel like she was just making up the lyrics. It sounded good, though, girl. I'm here for it. I'll, I'll buy your EP. Okay, and then her other song choice, Wifey, Wifey. Who's that girl? I'm the wifey for lifey. I don't even know. <laughs> Try me. Okay, all right. And, you know, Paula and Forrest seen that they were down for both songs. You know, Paula was like, yes, girl, 
yes, yes, that this is the one. And I'm like, where did you become a music director? So first you were an aspiring rapper and now you're a music director. Now you hype Williams. Okay. All right, Paula. But yeah. And then Forrest is like, yeah, yeah, I, I think I think you should go for the for the for the wife of song. Cause that, that that's a hit right there. You could just see the little schemes. You know, you know when they get an idea, you could just see it ticking in both their minds. Cause you know they're both shy steep like that, okay? I love Paula J. Parker, but her husband is a fucking he's I don't know what's wrong with him. But whatever it is, it just seems to bring down Paula's level, okay? Alright, they both look like shysters to me. Like they're both up to no good or something, okay? And Countess isn't here for it. She doesn't want Forrest involved in anything. Alright, but then Next thing I know, Countess's um, stylist slash friend slash, I don't know, comes through, okay, Miss Savannah. All right, Miss Savannah's trans, okay, all right, we, we didn't miss that. We we saw the, the overgrownness and the big man hands and the man voice. We saw it all, okay, but all right, whatever. And, you know, um, immediately, like, Miss Savannah gets offended because she the text that <laughs> that Forrest is somehow a homophobe even though she didn't say that but I don't even know but I, I don't know why this happens when you know an L someone a member of the LGBT community gets introduced on the show they automatically like are you guys just very sensitive or is it just for on the show like, I don't understand I don't know why gays and trans feels like feel like they you know feel like everyone's against them and even if everyone is against you, you shouldn't give a fuck because you're living your life, okay? You're doing what you want to do. You should be happy with that. You're not living your life for anyone else but you. Okay, so Miss Savannah, you had to miss me with that bullshit, okay? You belong on Love and Hip Hop ATR with D Smith's emotional ass too, man. What the fuck was that all about? She was like, so what, do you have a problem with trans? And Fred was like, I, I ain't got no problem with nobody. <laughs> what are you talking about? She's like, I don't know, but I just feel like you have a problem or something. I'm No, no. And even if he does have a problem, no one gives a fuck about Forrest. So neither should you. Okay? So then, you know, Paula's suggesting, you know, themes for the music video. She's like, you know what? Wifey sounds like it should be set in the, in the 40s. You know, a jazz theme. And I'm like, you've already missed me. No one, no one, no one. No, nah, no, nah, you've, you've missed me already. No. Nah. All right. Meanwhile, Savannah's like, mm hmm And whilst we on set, you know, I could just be, like, eating your man's hot dog and stuff. And Paula's like, excuse me, what? Huh? Wait, whose hot dog are you going to be eating? And Savannah's like, you know, like, your man's hot dog. And <laughs> I'm like, no, Savannah, no. Just stop it. Just, just please stop. Just please stop. And then if Forrest gets offended, you're going to call him a homophobe. Just stop it. Like, not everyone's comfortable like that. Yes, everyone can accept you, but don't don't push it. They don't know you like that. Don't don't joke around like that. Don't play about his man thing. Just stop, okay? No. And then she just starts being messy for no reason. She's like, are y'all content in your marriage? Savannah, go away. Go away. Go away. All right? I'm going to need Countess to fire you. All right, because I can see you're trying to take her as your protege. you got the same hairstyle going on. I'm going to need you to go, Savannah. Go away, please. I'm done. <laughs> Bye. They just get into some conversation. And then Forrest is like, do you, do you love, do you believe in love? And then Savannah's like, I don't believe in love. And then Forrest is like, do you believe in God, though? And then um, Savannah's like, yeah, I do believe in God. Because if God, I would not be here. I love God. And Forrest is like, exactly, my brother. God is love. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now see, Forrest is too dumb to be shady, okay? So you know he did that by accident. Like, come on now. And then Savannah's like, see now, see, I'm offended. You call me brother. All right, you could come. All right, I'm done. And I'm done on this section. Anyway, moving on. So Monika wants to get into her acting career once again. She wants to take it seriously now, you know, especially since she's no longer with her twin. She wants to try and branch out by herself. However, her agent just doesn't feel like she's taking it seriously, nor does he feel like she just has enough experience to even get roles because she seems to be playing herself half the damn time. I agree. I agree. Okay? So he suggests that she goes back home and runs some lines, okay? All right? So that's what she does. Meanwhile, Lisa goes on a date with 
Lenny Maxwell Kravitz Jr. Okay, and they have a good time. Okay, I don't care. Moving back on to Malika. So, she attempts to run her lines with Dorian. Now, I know some of y'all remember Dorian from College Hill. That's right. That's right. Even though London is very behind, we did somehow manage to get College Hill and Baldwin Hill. I remember it all and I, I lived for it and I miss it. I miss it so damn much. Okay. But I remember Dorian from College Hill. And I never liked him. I've never liked him. I still don't really like him. I don't even know what he does. Is he a socialite? Is I don't I don't get it. Alright, so anyway. She's like, so you know, I'm going to run some lines with a very close friend of mine, Dorian. You know, because I need somebody that's gonna be real with me. Plus, he's an actor himself. I mean, I guess we all just actors nowadays because I don't recall seeing Dorian in a damn thing, okay? All right, I mean, he's an actor, okay? All right, good for you. So, he attempts to try and get her to start running her lines. However, you can see she's not focusing. She's just taking it as a joke. And he calls her out. He's like, what the fuck, Malik? Like, what are you doing? Like, you, you're taking this, like, you're not taking this seriously. And then she breaks down. She's like, it's not that I'm not taking it seriously. It's just I'm finding it so hard to not be along. So I, Khadija, you know, I just haven't done this before and I feel so uncomfortable. And I'm like, look, girl, I understand, okay? You, you're twins, you know, you're, you're joint at the hip or whatever. You know, you, you share the same DNA, you're close. All right, I get it. Sisterly bond, you've been doing your active thing together. I understand. However, look, Khadija's moved on in life, okay? She has a man, she has kids, she has a family. All right, so you really can't expect to be doing shit with her 24-7, okay? All right? Especially with all the time you spent underneath Khloe Kardashian's asshole. So, I'm just saying, you need to start looking out for yourself now. I know it's hard, Khadija. That's not your name, Malika. But I'm going to need you to get it together. Okay? I'm going to need you to start focusing on yourself. Alright? I get it. I, I sympathize with her and then I don't at the same time. You know? But I'm going to need you to get it together. Okay? She doesn't feel confident and comfortable without her sister, and it's going to take some time. That's understandable, but Dorian is like, look, you guys may have been born together, but you're going to die alone. Okay, so I'm going <laughs> so to need you to get it together. Okay? All right, so we'll see. Good luck, Malika. Moving on. Countess's little segment on the girls constantly feeling some type of way. Guys, I'm going to need Countess to to do some stand-up because she's funny as hell she's funny as hell all right she just she's just so silly and she's so shady this season like even more so <laughs> he's like you can't do nothing around these girls without them feeling some type of way oh oh you walking different so i feel some type of way oh oh <laughs> oh you looked at me different so i feel some type of way countess we get it girl and we love you Comedy night. All right, so Golden and Lisa arrive at the comedy club, and Paula gives them a heads up, okay? She's like, okay, um, Carmen's going to read you guys' asses, so I'm going to need you to understand that, okay? All right, I hope you have a good night. And then, you know, um, Countess obviously comes through too, and then, um, yeah, Carmen gets on stage, and the clowning session begins. So she starts off with Paula. She's like, y'all ain't no Paula J. Parker. That's my girl right there, Paula J. Parker. You know she stays playing a hoe. Okay, you may know her from Hustle and Flow from Friday, and she always playing a hoe, but she not a hoe in real life. She got a husband and a kid. Okay, girl. All right, give it up for Golden Brooks, okay? You may know Golden Brooks from Girlfriends. Girl. I thought we were girlfriends once upon a time, okay? All right, look at you looking all good, eh? <laughs> Who else is in the house? It's Countess Vaughn. Countess Vaughn, girl, you looking good, okay? You got that nip tuck and session. You looking real good, girl, okay? She went from 227 to 186. Girl, look at you. Look at you. You looking good, girl. She's ready to make a comeback. Yes. 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 Countess, okay, but I'm gonna need you to fix them wigs, girl, dog, because them wigs is not on point. But, but, but we going it's a work in progress. We're gonna get on to it. And then Countess is like, ooh, that bitch tried it. 
Okay. I mean, you want to talk about my wig. But let's talk about that cabal towel. <laughs> <laughs>